All right, guys, welcome to today's video. If you are new to the channel, we take a look at the latest gaming industry news, rumors, and leaks with a heavy focus on PlayStation. Timestamps are available in the description along with the links to all of today's topics. And last week it was announced that Resident Evil 9 was delayed internally and that Capcom were working on another Resident Evil game to release in place of the rumored open world Res 9 game. Well, Capcom is reportedly planning on revealing Resident Evil 9 really soon and apparently the game will be launching very early in 2025, possibly first quarter. This rumor comes by way of Dusk Golem, who is into all things Resident Evil, and it's generally right about the Resident Evil rumors. However, like all rumors, take everything you hear with a pinch of salt. According to known insider Dusk Golem on X or Twitter, he has claimed that previous reports about Resident Evil 9 being delayed internally can be pushed to one side, and that the game is now being planned for a release a lot sooner than everyone expected. He goes on to to say the possible delay I had heard whispers about can be pushed to one side. Resident Evil 9 should be revealed pretty soon and released early next year. If what I heard previously holds true, it, referring to Resident Evil 9, should be released in January 2025. It will have had about seven years worth of development time on the game. And according to Golem, Resident Evil 9 has been in development since the back end of 2017, possibly 2018, and was originally conceived as a possible eighth numbered entry into the series with Village at the time due to be a side project. Capcom hasn't announced anything on Resident Evil 9 yet, but Dusk Golem has been quite forthcoming in leaking details in the past. He previously claimed that the upcoming survival horror title has the largest budget in the Resident Evil series entire history. Golem has also said previously multiple times that Resident Evil 9 is set to launch next year in 2025, so that fits in with his latest post. It's also supposedly meant to be an open world game or have much more of an explorable area in the game's map. Now I don't know how this will work with a Resident Evil 9 game and need to know more about this open world rumor. It does worry me if it's true but I guess we need to see some gameplay to put those concerns to bed. The fact that we're due for a release date and some kind of a reveal suggests that we are due for the game to be shown at an upcoming event and it's either going to be a PlayStation event rumored to be this month or the Summer Game Fest in June. What do you think? When do you think we will get to see gameplay of the new Resident Evil 9? game with a launch date set to be revealed this summer very soon. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and let's move on. A report from the Wall Street Journal claims that Sony Pictures and private equity firm Apollo Global Management have indeed made a joint bid to buy Paramount Global for $26 billion all cash. So no combination of cash and shares, just straightforward cash to acquire the entertainment giant. Rumors of Paramount being sold have been floating around for some time now with Sony having already been mentioned as one of the circling potential buyers, as has Apollo, who the Wall Street Journal reports previously made a $26 billion bid plus equity to buy Paramount, but it was rejected due to concerns around whether Apollo could financially put the deal together. Skydance Media has been the other front runner to make the purchase, although opinions on dealing with Skydance have been in flux due to shareholders not being too pleased about how controlling shareholder Cherie Redstone would come out of that deal with even more power and control. All of this hesitation and dissent around how the purchase should go down and the sale being drawn out resulted in Paramount's now former chief executive Bob Bakish departing the company. Paramount dodged questions from investors by blasting the Mission Impossible theme song on its latest earnings call. If this new joint bid from Sony and Apollo is accepted, that means all the Sonic movies and TV shows, the Halo TV show and the thousand plus movies and TV shows that Paramount owns and is putting into a streaming service will all fall under the Sony umbrella. It also opens a door for even more collaborations between Sony and Paramount's store of IP and another avenue for Sony to keep expanding its gaming IP into other mediums. This is huge for Sony and their media side of the business. They already have Crunchyroll and a shed load of movies and TV shows within their library of content, not to mention music and gaming. If they were to go ahead and acquire Paramount and add all of their media, music, films, TV shows, animations and gaming into a subscription service, providing the price is right, there could be a lot of value in what they have to offer. It would have to be the right price though, not multiple subscriptions for different things. One subscription, where maybe with different tiers, and with those tiers you have different access, but the price has to be right because times are tough and people cannot afford to just take up new subscriptions or pay for higher prices. But very interesting to see if Sony and uh, Apollo end up with uh, Paramount. Okay, let's move right along. Helldivers 2 is enjoying phenomenal success right now across PlayStation and PC. Everyone is loving Helldivers 2. However, when the game 
initially launched, it did have some bugs and things did need to be ironed out. There were issues at launch. There were problems with the game servers overflowing and um, yeah, there were problems. But right now though, the co-op shooter is in a far more stable state, but something else has now cropped up that's catching a lot of PC players by surprise and it's all Sony's fault apparently. An official update on Steam explains that starting soon, PC users will need to link their Steam account to a PlayStation Network account in order to play the game. The statement goes on to say, due to technical issues at the launch of Helldivers 2, we allowed the linking requirements for Steam accounts to a PlayStation Network account to be temporarily optional. The grace period will now expire. Basically, after 6th of May, any new players will need to link Steam and PlayStation Network accounts. Existing players, meanwhile, have a little longer to get this sorted. The mandatory PSN login will start to appear for them starting 30th of May and will need to link their accounts by the 4th of June. If you dare to view the responses on Steam or Reddit, the comments and responses on both sites are full of people pretty pissed off at the requirement really. Broadly speaking, PC players are not happy, they now need to link accounts, create PSN accounts they don't really want and so on. Many feel that they've been duped and that this PSN requirement has come out of the blue. However, that's not quite the case. It was always noted, even pre-launch, that the game would need you to have a PSN account to play. But this requirement was placed on hold because of the game's early troubles. But now this is back on its feet and the game is working fine. Sony and Arrowhead are bringing that feature back. This is not something new that Sony or Arrowhead are kind of forcing. This isn't a new practice. Many publishers now require you to have accounts with them in order to play their games. Epic, Capcom, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers, to name a few, each require you to sign up with them to play their online titles. Sony is doing the same for its games on PC. But Helldivers 2's teething issues meant it was temporarily paused and the change is causing a fair amount of confusion. What do you think of this? Is Sony right to do this or should they have removed this feature altogether? I mean, after all, this was a requirement that you had to link your Steam and PSN accounts beginning, but because of the issues the game had at launch, the feature was stopped for a short period of time with a view that it will be switched on at a later date. So it was always going to happen. It was just a case of when. Okay, guys, let's move on. When I heard about the next piece of news, it all but confirmed to me that Sony PlayStation is completely dropping the ball or dropping its support for the PSVR 2. You decide and probably wishes it hadn't launched it. Why do I think like this? Well, Meta has announced that their next entry in the iconic Batman Arkham series will be Batman Arkham Shadow, which is a VR game that is exclusive to the Meta Quest 3. Iron Man VR developer Camouflage and Oculus Studios are developing a game which is set to release later this year, and it's going to be exclusive to the Meta Quest 3. Meta didn't share much about the game itself, giving us a short trailer featuring Batman's point of view as he swoops over the grimy, rain-slicked streets of Gotham. Without too much detail, the trailer suggests a big part of the game will likely include a lot of those glide-through Gotham traversal sections that made Batman Arkham City so cool in the first place. Meta also hasn't yet shared who will be voicing Batman. Kevin Conroy, the voice actor best known for the iconic performance as Batman, passed away in 2022, but not before voicing Batman in Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Arkham Shadow is the second time Batman Arkham series has gotten the VR treatment. In 2016, Rocksteady Studios released Batman Arkham VR on the PlayStation VR, the original PlayStation VR before porting the game to additional VR headsets. This is why I'm pissed off, guys. This, it, the first game was already on the original PSVR. Why isn't it on PSVR 2? Why haven't they got the next game? Ridiculous. Batman Arkham Shadow is set to release exclusively on the Meta Quest 3 later this year. And Meta wrote, we can expect more details about the game to be revealed during the big Summer Game Fest show on uh, June the 7th. Extremely disappointing news, especially if you own a PSVR 2, especially if you've played the first Batman game on the original PSVR. I mean, to me, this suggests it's another missed opportunity by Sony. It feels like they've dropped the ball here. It feels like they're no longer pushing this type of content to PSVR 2. I was so close to buying the PSVR 2, but I ended up just pushing ahead and push, kicking the can, if you like, further down the line. It's a, For me, it's a very new space and with so many different VR headsets like the Meta Quest Pro, the Meta Quest 3, PSVR 2, Apple Vision Pro, Valve, HTC, they all have their own VR sets. I think I just want to hold fire until later in the year and pick the one where I get the best games. And I don't mean games where you're, you know, messing about with trying to catch lights or dancing around to a beat or moving boxes around with your hands. I mean a proper game with guns, taking down enemies. That's what I call a, ge a game that I can enjoy, a single player experience. I want to play those kind of games on a VR headset. So for now, I'm just going to hold fire until the end of the year and see what best VR headsets are out there along with the games and I'll take it from there. But really disappointing that Batman Arkham Shadow is exclusive to MetaQuest. Hey, fair play MetaQuest for acquiring the uh, the rights to the game on an exclusive basis. I might end up buying a MetaQuest 3 because of that.
if, if that's the only place I can play it. You see? You see what exclusivity does? It's now got me thinking, should I go and buy a MetaQuest 3? Because that game is exclusive to that VR set. See? Exclusives. You've got to have exclusives. It drives your platform forward. Anyway, that's a conversation for another video. But for now, thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments about today's topics. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.